Eating for Peace of Mind, Body, and Spirit. Today we'll talk to Dr. Terry Shintani about his book, The Peace Diet. Most doctors have almost no formal education in nutrition. That's what makes my interview today so special. I talked to Dr. Terry Shintani, who's not only an MD, but has a master's in nutrition from Harvard. Dr. Shintani has dedicated his career to helping the people of Hawaii maintain or regain their health through nutrition. That's not an easy task in a place where Spam sells over 7 million cans a year, more than any other place in the country. His track record is so successful, he's won the highest award from the U.S. Secretary of Health, and he's been designated a living treasure by the state of Hawaii for his contributions to humanity. I wanted to find out what Dr. Shintani recommends, so I asked him about his book, The Peace Diet. Well, The Peace Diet came about because I've been doing health programs for many years, turning people's health around, getting them off their diabetes medicine, turning around their heart disease, um, uh, reducing their aches and pains, getting rid of rheumatoid arthritis and autoimmune disease for years. Those are health issues. But um, the reason I wrote The Peace Diet was when I first changed my diet, I actually did it for spiritual reasons. And uh, one of the things that I noticed was when I ate really well, I became very peaceful. And the theme of the book is when you, when you actually have inner peace and peace of mind, body, and spirit, actually the body becomes healthy because you no longer have the battles going on in your, in your body. Because inflammation, for example, is a battle going around in your body. It's, it's a lack of peace. So the peace diet is a diet that uh, allows you to eat in a way and live your life in a way that brings peace of body, mind, and spirit. And in so doing, you gradually get rid of many of the diseases that most people suffer from. Years ago, they changed the food guide pyramid to the my plate, and I was never happy with either. So since now the official guide was a plate, I decided to design a plate that would fit the way that I recommend people to eat. And as I was cutting up the plate to accommodate the proportions that I thought was appropriate, when I set it up in a certain way, it looked like the peace sign. So it kind of just kind of made sense. The similar thing is, of course, we have lots of vegetables. And uh, I have fruit in there in a smaller quantity. And it's smaller because there's a lot of sugar in fruit, so you don't want to overdo it. And at the same time, fruit is full of antioxidants and nutrients. And uh, one of the big changes is the my plates is grain, but I say whole grain. If you just say grain instead of whole grains, grains can be white bread, it can be pastries, it can be muffins and cakes and biscuits. You know, I don't do those kinds of foods. When I say whole grain, I mean whole grain. I mean oatmeal. And I don't mean instant oats, I mean rolled oats or brown rice or quinoa or barley or wheat berries. That's what I mean by whole grain. So, uh, and if they do bread products, I don't, I don't say no bread products, but I try to do uh, either stone ground or sprouted grain. And the reason for that is it changes the glycemic index number. When you do commercially prepared breads and, um, and baked goods, glycemic number is high, even if it's whole wheat. In fact, a whole wheat bread uh, has a higher glycemic number than table sugar. So that's one of the big differences. And then what's actually illogical about the my plate is you have a section called protein. Well, it didn't make sense because fruit is a type of food. Vegetables are a type of food. Grain is a type of food. But protein is a component of food. So there wasn't even parallel construction within the official my plate that the government was putting out. And actually, when people think of protein, they think of beef, pork, chicken, right? The reality is those three are mostly fat because chicken, around 55% fat, pork, around 60% fat, 
beef, 65 to 70 percent fat. These are all mostly fat foods. If they wanted to pick a macronutrient that represented meat, which is where they're implying, that section should have been fat. But of course, nobody wants to do that. When you look at beef, pork, and chicken, uh, modern studies say that those three are associated with more diabetes, more heart disease, more cancer. In the peace plate, I call it beans, and I'm talking about beans and legumes and vegetable sources of protein. Those are associated with lower rates of these diseases. So I prefer to choose as our daily food, foods that are associated with lower rates of these diseases. So the vegetables and the grains are in larger proportion, and the fruit and the beans are smaller. When you make that into a plate, it looks like a peace sign. And the my plate has this little satellite called dairy, implying that you're supposed to consume that on a daily basis. Well, I think that's uh, nonsense. I think dairy should be party food, a once in a while food. In nature, no species on earth drinks the milk of another species. And no species on earth drinks milk when they're adults. Because milk is, of course, food for babies, right? And that's nature's way. And only humans make it out to be a daily food for adults. Doesn't, doesn't make sense in nature at all. If you just think about it, you go, oh yeah, that doesn't make sense. That's all good, but how does Dr. Shintani get people in Hawaii to stick to his program? Uh, number one, I make sure that the food tastes good. I try to make it simple. We have food demos and we teach them how to do simple things that add flavor and uh, interest and texture to food without spending much time. People think, oh, you're gonna eat health food and they're thinking rabbit food, right? Uh, no, it's nothing like that at all. And routinely, people say, wow, if I knew I could eat like this, I would have started doing this a long time ago. I also say, it's not just diet now. It's lifestyle, it's exercise, it's having a clean environment, it's breathing fresh air. And in my uh, peace diet diagram, you know, I have the enhancements around it, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. I always add these other aspects to it so that people have other reasons to stay with the diet. Um, I try to get people to think about all the things they want to do in their life that they won't be able to do if their health fails. Or if you want to look at it another way, for me, um, when I changed my diet, my energy was boundless. I had so much energy, my thinking was clear, I, I felt better, um, so it might be a way to just feel better. I, I don't mind saying it now, when I was a senior in high school and a freshman in college, I had a problem with depression. Changed my diet, I've, I haven't had a depressed day in my life since then. I think diet has a lot to do with your mood even. Uh, so. There, try to find a reason, whether it's a health reason or, or how you feel or how you look. By the way, looks might be a, a good reason. Athletic performance, people should, th should know that Carl Lewis, greatest athlete in the history of the world, was vegan when he was training. That's got to count for something. And if it's in terms of spiritual development, you look at how most of the world's holy people for spiritual development, they would either fast or they'd eat a plant-based diet. You find that in the Bible, you find that among the teachings of Buddha and uh, the Hindus, most of them are vegetarian. There's gotta be a reason for that. For more information about Dr. Shintani's books and programs, I've put information in the links below. If you like this video, please subscribe and tell your friends. See you next time.